Hello everyone. I wanted to cover an indie title next, and this is a game I wanted to talk about for a very long time, and found that not a lot of people were even willing to hear me. I can chalk this up to it being a game that heavily features anthropomorphic characters, and I have to put this at the front of the review, especially because of the pun in the title of the game itself, and say flat out that I'm going to be objective and look at it as more than just some furry metroidvania wish fulfillment. I personally believe that you should simply look at it for what it is, and that's a high fantasy setting. So with that out of the way, let's get down to it. You are Dust, an edgy looking anime protagonist that wakes up in the woods completely unsure of who he is, and with a magical talking sword and its part-timer guardian following it around. Her name is Fidget. This is one of the Blades of Ara whatever that means, and she desperately wants to take it back home before someone sees it's missing, but it knows who you are. So you begin your journey to remember yourself. She begrudgingly follows you because she's kind of a pushover. As far as stories go, this is at least a very good way to combine these tropes and have it cohesively tell a believable tale. As it goes on, it connects a decently sized host of characters that you know have more to them, but the game doesn't really expound on them. The story also falls flat in that its size and scope doesn't mesh with the size and scope of the game itself. It tells of a grand epic that is the tale of all tales, but it needs to be longer to have the dramatic impact it wants, and relies on a decent sized amount of telling, not showing. This is where I'll get into spoilers for a second, so if you want to skip ahead to avoid the like one or two things I have to say about it, there'll be a time on screen you can go to. Dust is something known as Sen Mithraran. He's a combination of a soul of pure good intention and a soul who possesses great power. He's a mix of two people who killed each other in combat, a master assassin, and a village boy who just wanted all of the killing of innocents to stop. It doesn't say how they achieved this combination of souls, or how the hell he's not dead by the end of the game, but it almost feels like it's trying to sequel bait, even though I know that's not the narrative intention. I have to say that the eugenic style story of a race that used to be ultra powerful, and the other race that just wants to kill them off for racism issues, is something that could be greatly expounded upon. And as a writer, I have to roll my eyes a bit. This this is the greatest tale of all tales, a story of a last stand after the world is basically nothing but a good handful of thousands. What about the ancient civilizations? What about how the hell we got here? That's way more of an interesting story idea than this, and as a good rule of thumb, if you're gonna tell a story, you should tell the most interesting part of it. I'm gonna stop right there, and we're gonna talk about how this game looks. And it's a mixed bag. It has off-putting 3D that feels misplaced in a mostly hand-drawn experience like this, and weirdly shaded and animated 2D that reminds me of something I would find on Neopets or DeviantArt. It contrasts this with breathtaking and stunning backgrounds and the fluid animation of the main character. I'm gonna take a second and run through the frame by frame of Dust swinging his sword, because holy crap, it looks good! If only the entire game was done just like this, it would be near completely flawless. And then you have a soundtrack that knows exactly what mood to throw over the game. This makes the precise combat controls, the fluid combat animations, and the well-drawn backgrounds all blend together so well that if you focus on solely this part of the game, it sells it. The sound effects are never off cue either. It all looks and sounds so good in motion. But as with most of this game, it comes with a contrasting negative element the voice acting. I have mixed feelings about the line delivery. I like the main character's voice actors and their lines. What I don't like is whatever sound equipment they use to record every line of voice acting in the game. It doesn't come across as professional. There's something really off about the quality here. If you combine it with how the dialogue is intentionally awkward for comedic effect, it can come off as a little cringy. As I mentioned, Dust has some supremely well-designed combat. It probably features the best combat system I've ever seen in a Metroidvania. You can't mash buttons and be good at this. It takes some actual practice to know where you're going to end up after a button press. One button controls mostly vertical movement and the other button controls the horizontal, with exceptions for throws that end horizontal combos. You can also dodge left and right without having to face the direction first, but it doesn't let you cancel a move with it. Holding the horizontal attack button gives you a parry for stunning enemies who block or aren't interrupted by attacks. This gives you good incentive to pay attention and think about when in your combo you are, so you don't simply mash the button and can react. The game doesn't really use how the combat mechanics affect your movement in a way that is conducive to learning its in and outs, however. This system reminds me closest to something like Devil May Cry, but with less depth. It's an absolutely genius idea on paper, and this is the main reason I spent four hours after I finished recording this review to grind out all the best gear at the end game. The bulk of why you play the game is in the gameplay and progression, which is top notch and will keep you wanting more. You end up backtracking for all the bits and bobs, not because the rewards are good, but because 
because the gameplay itself is satisfying. It just feels good to play. I feel like this could have been taken so much further, and it would have been nice to see a lot more of the game feature fights that focus on mastering the movement-centric mechanics. I know there are challenge areas, but this doesn't scratch my itch at all. If you're not great at platformers like me, you can play on an easier difficulty. But I'm all for saying you should push yourself. This game is only about five to seven hours long if you cut straight through and do just the story. But I'm gonna say, as the story is the weak area, you should absolutely 100% this game. Do every quest, find every secret, do every challenge area. This game deserves your attention, and it deserves to be known as a good game despite its flaws. This game has been out for a while now. It's pretty cheap and is on every major system. How can you look at this combat system and say you won't try it, that you can pass? If you love feeling like a badass, if you love combat systems that are good at making you feel cool to a killer soundtrack, then you're gonna love Dust. I played this game around right after it came out, and upon playing it again, I felt like something was wrong somehow. I realized that trying to play the game for the story is the wrong way to go. The story is easily the weakest part of the game, and you have to sit down and try playing the game for what it is. You can't focus on what's being said, what the art style is like, or what's happening, or you'll become lost in the concept of it. You have to be prepared to separate those two sides of yourself and experience the game as a game and not as a grand epic, even though it desperately wants to carry itself as one. This is easily the most split I've ever been about a game. I want to like everything about it, and the furry trash side of me wants to love what it is, but I can't pretend the flaws aren't here. I still think you should find a copy of this game and play it at least the once. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for continuing to watch, and I'd like to thank uh, my first patron for subscribing to me on Patreon. It really means a lot to me. I, I got an offer to uh, review a game, and someone's bought the game for me, and uh, <laughs> that'll be out as my next review, and it's really, really cool. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.